We see Yang Fan ordering his shadows to go and block the city lord as he goes to help Yan Yu. But as the shadow soldiers are about to attack the city lord, he tells Yang Fan that there is a difference between him and Yang Fan. Suddenly, the city lord summons a giant monster made out of metal and tells the metal to wake up and turn into the dragon of the city lord. The giant dragon attacks Yang Fan from behind. Yang Fan thinks, is this the power of gold? Yang Fan dodges the dragon's attack, and as the dragon attacks again, Yang Fan keeps dodging the attacks. Seeing this, Yang Fan thinks that the city lord's ability is really useful. We see the city lord jump onto the head of the metal dragon and ride it. He tells Yang Fan that he only needed to take away the sage, but now he plans on killing Yang Fan and then taking the sage with him. Yang Fan, upon hearing this, questions why the city lord is so determined to get the sage at any cost. However, the city lord tells Yang Fan that it is not something Yang Fan should ask. We see the city lord attacking Yang Fan with his metal dragon, and as the attack creates a giant explosion, Yan Yu and Lin Miaochuan become concerned for Yang Fan. Seeing Yan Yu being attacked, Lin Miaochuan tries to get up, thinking she has to help Yan Yu. But as she tries to use her powers, blood starts to come out of her mouth, and she falls down. Lin Miaochuan, still determined to help, uses her power to send a magic orb of light toward Yan Yu. As the orb lands on Yan Yu, Ruan Ruan is seen ordering her monsters to quickly break the tortoise shell of Yan Yu. Suddenly, the orb of light gives Yan Yu Lin Miaochuan's powers, and using this new power, Yan Yu manages to get up and awaken her armor. Yan Yu charges toward Ruan Ruan and punches her, making her fall to the ground. As Yan Yu sits on top of her, attacking her, Yan Yu was about to use her weapons on her shoulder. But Ruan Ruan's monsters manage to stop the attack by breaking the weapons. Seeing this, Ruan Ruan tells Yan Yu that she can't win and starts to laugh. However, Yan Yu, taking her armor off, uses her own physical strength, which is that of a sixth rank, to attack Ruan Ruan and headbutts her on the head multiple times. This knocks both of them out unconscious. We see Ruan Ruan's monsters turn back into stuffed animals and dolls as the city lord observes the battle between Yan Yu and Ruan Ruan. He says that he has never admired any woman to such an extent as he admires Yan Yu. He also mentions that to be able to train such an admirable subordinate like her makes him slightly appreciate Yang Fan more. He adds that it is, after all, hard to train women. The city lord, thinking he has killed Yang Fan, says that now he will collect Yang Fan's corpse and stars to walk down from his throne. However, he is shocked to see an attack coming towards him. The city lord blocks the attack with his metal powers and calls Yang Fan's fire magic useless. He tells Yang Fan that he is seizing the whole metal power from the origin of the gold ring and that Yang Fan can't compare to him. But suddenly, the metal that was created by the city lord starts to melt from Yang Fan's fire. This creates a big explosion that sends the city lord flying. The city lord manages to block the fire but realizes that this is not an ordinary fire. He questions if Yang Fan also has the power of origin and, upon seeing the ring on Yang Fan's finger, the city lord confirms that Yang Fan also has the power of origin. We see the city lord use his ring, telling Yang Fan that Yang Fan can't be on the same level as him. The city lord creates two giant metal dragons, but Yang Fan also uses his ring to create three dragons made out of different colors of fire. The fire dragon melts the metal dragon of the city lord. Seeing this, it shocks the city lord who realizes that Yang Fan's flames instantly melt his metal dragons. The city lord thinks that there is still an even higher grade of metal he can control, but he hasn't unlocked the prohibition on the ring. He questions if Yang Fan has managed to unlock this higher power but thinks that it is impossible to do, and he doesn't believe it. As the city lord stands on a metal platform, he sees Yang Fan looking at him from the ground. Seeing this, the city lord wonders if he is getting scared but reminds himself that he is the city lord. He questions how there can be someone who can dominate his strength. As we see the city lord's legs shake in fear, Yang Fan sends a giant blue fire dragon toward the city lord. The city lord also uses his power of origin and creates two giant metal dragons to attack Yang Fan's fire dragon. Yang Fan thinks that he will let the dragons fight first and later finish him off. We see Yang Fan go to where the unconscious Yan Yu is and thank her for her efforts. Using his ring, Yang Fan tries to use his water power to heal Yan Yu, but it is not enough. He tells Yan Yu to wait as he defeats the city lord as soon as possible. Yang Fan looks at Miao Chuan, who is in an even worse condition than Yan Yu and has lost a lot of blood. If it weren't for Miao Chuan's physical evolution, she would have died. 
Yang Fan puts both Yin Yu and Miao Chuan inside a water bubble for them to heal in and says that he can't hold the bubble for more than 10 minutes at most. He adds that in this critical time, he must defeat the city lord as fast as possible and find someone who can treat them. We see the city lord fighting with Yang Fan's fire dragon using his metal dragon. As the metal dragon overwhelms the blue fire dragon, the city lord says that compared to his metal dragon, Yang Fan's flame dragon is still far behind. The city lord laughs, thinking that he has the stronger power of origin. However, Yang Fan quickly appears from behind and uses his ice sword to attack the city lord, saying that he doesn't have time. The city lord is shocked to see how fast Yang Fan is and thinks that he has to block the sword. However, the sword reaches the city lord and manages to cut him a little bit. The city lord manages to dodge the sword attack as Yang Fan tells him that if the city lord didn't give up on dodging the attack, he would have been dead by now. The city lord, now injured, questions how Yang Fan became so much faster and points out that Yang Fan is only at the 7th rank. He says that Yang Fan couldn't have increased his strength in a flash. Yang Fan questions why the city lord is asking this when he knows that the ring of origin increases the user's strength. But the city lord is still confused and asks how Yang Fan is stronger even after being physically weaker than him. To the city lord's surprise, Yang Fan shows him that he has two rings of origin. This shocks the city lord, who questions how Yang Fan has two rings of origin. But Yang Fan, charging toward the city lord, says that he will have three after killing him. Suddenly, he is told to stop by the secretary of the city lord, who arrives at the battlefield with another person in a wheelchair. The secretary begs Yang Fan not to kill the city lord, emphasizing that if the city lord died, the city and its civilians would be in danger. Yang Fan, upon hearing this, tells her that he doesn't care about Haitian city but still wants a safe and stable human living place like Haitian city to continue for the time being. He then grabs and drags the city lord to the ground. We see Yang Fan thinking that, for the time being, it is not realistic to build such a safe human living place like the current one. He believes that his mom and dad are just ordinary people who can't follow him around. Yang Fan brings the city lord down to the ground, and the secretary asks if the city lord is okay. The city lord questions why the secretary brought the man in the wheelchair here, but the secretary tells the city lord that they must tell everyone the truth. She also tells the city lord that she wants to see him live more than to build a kingdom that belongs to them. The secretary informs Yang Fan that the man in the wheelchair is the reason why they have to get the sage at all costs. She explains that the man in the wheelchair is the one who can create food, and in order to create food in large quantities, the man had overspent his life. The city lord did everything to save him. Yang Fan is confused to hear this and tells them that even if the world is ending, there are many things that can be used as food. He questions what the real reason is for saving the man. The secretary says that she can tell Yang Fan the reason but questions if Yang Fan can be trusted. The city lord tells the secretary that Yang Fan must be a running dog for those guys, which prompts Yang Fan to question if he means the gods who he met after finishing the ultimate challenge field. The city lord says that he knows that the gods want everyone to kneel down and serve them and that only those who have kneeled down to them can come out alive and become a god's envoy. He calls Yang Fan trash. Yang Fan confirms that what he said is true. Hearing this, the city lord says that if he were Yang Fan, he would have destroyed himself. However, Yang Fan tells the city lord that a great man knows how to adapt properly to the real situation. Yang Fan says that, on the contrary, it is more ridiculous for the city lord, who has lost heart to fight just because he saw that his opponent had two rings. This angers the city lord, but Yang Fan tells them that the point of telling the truth now is not whether they can believe him or not. It's about whether they want the city lord to die or not. The secretary asks Yang Fan not to kill the city lord and tells Yang Fan that the reason why they wanted to build Haitian city is to accept god envoys as their subordinates, recruit various powerful supernaturalists, and even have the vice captain devote his life to making food. It was all to fight the people who turned their world into an apocalypse. Hearing this, Yang Fan questions the secretary if she is not afraid of death after seeing the god's powers with her own eyes. But the secretary tells Yang Fan that because they have seen the gods, they know some of the truth, and that gives them determination. She says that they must unite forces because if they follow the wishes of the gods and start a war, it will end with the extinction of the human race. Yang Fan tells her to continue, and the secretary drops to her knees and begs Yang Fan not to kill the city lord. She emphasizes that the stability of Haitian city is only maintained because of the belief in the city lord. 
If the city lord dies, those with supernatural powers will rise to the top, and humanity will face extinction. The people of Haitian city also appear, saying that if the city lord dies, the city will be destroyed, and they will have no place to go. They express their fear of living in constant fear of dealing with the zombies and plead with Yang Fan not to kill the city lord. The city lord, now injured, says that if he has to do it again, he will still do whatever it takes. He mentions that there are still many people living in the periphery of Haitian city, and to save them, he must do this. However, Yang Fan, taking the city lord's ring, says that he will take his ring of origin and the city lord can continue being the Haitian city lord. Yang Fan also tells them to call their two doctors to come with him to help his partners as an atonement for the city lord. The secretary quickly calls for the doctors and orders them to heal the injured, as the life of the city lord depends on it. We see the secretary helping the city lord get up. The city lord asks Yang Fan why he needs so many rings and advises him not to do it just for his own power. He tells Yang Fan to share the rings with his partners. Yang Fan thanks the city lord for his concern but tells the city lord that he has not only met the people who destroyed their world but also met the true god of their world. He explains that she was the one who told him to collect the five rings of origin and that the god told him that the rings were the key to saving the world. Hearing this, the city lord thinks that no wonder Yang Fan's ring ability was unlocked so high because he had seen things even he hadn't ever seen. He realizes that if what Yang Fan is saying is true, Yang Fan can really save the world. He believes that if they show loyalty to Yang Fan now, there will definitely be a place for them in the future world. The city lord tells Yang Fan that they can give Yang Fan the fourth ring too. Upon hearing this, Yang Fan questions if they really have it and where it is. The city lord instructs his secretary to take out the ring and give it to Yang Fan. However, the secretary hesitates, saying that if they give away the last ring they have, they won't be able to protect Haitian city. The city lord tells her that if they don't give the ring to him now, he will kill them in the future, and Haitian city will perish with them. He argues that with the power Yang Fan will have with the four rings, the city will be safer, more protected, and more stable in the future. The secretary questions if they will give Yang Fan the right to rule Haitian city, but the city lord tells her that by giving the fourth ring to Yang Fan, they will have the best chance of securing the right to rule the city. He emphasizes that Yang Fan's plan is to save the entire human race and not just a single city. He believes it's only a matter of time before Yang Fan has the power to rule the world and save it. The secretary says that she understands and thinks that if Yang Fan was recognized by the city lord, he must have made a thorough consideration. She takes out the ring, the ring of origin wood, and hands it to the city lord. The city lord takes the ring to Yang Fan and tells him that he will not give Yang Fan the ring for nothing. Yang Fan tells the city lord that whatever the conditions are, as long as they are reasonable, he will accept them. The city lord's first condition is that Yang Fan will protect the safety of Haitian city, and the second is that the management of Haitian city is given to him and remains unchanged. Yang Fan agrees to these conditions. Hearing this, the city lord thinks that he didn't choose the wrong person to give the ring to. He gives the ring to Yang Fan, expressing hope that the world will return to its original state, and now it's up to Yang Fan. Yang Fan takes the ring, saying that he will do his best. Suddenly, the doctor informs everyone that the sage has lost a lot of blood and needs a blood donor of the right type, or her life could be in danger. The city lord quickly tells his people to go and donate blood immediately. As the people rush to donate blood, Yang Fan accepts that the current city lord is the best city lord. The city lord tells Yang Fan to follow him and leave the healing to the doctor, as he has some messages and things for Yang Fan. We see the city lord bring Yang Fan to his storage room where they research zombies and store crystal cores. The city lord presses a red button, which opens a box from which a potion appears. The lord tells Yang Fan to just touch it, and Yang Fan will understand what it is. As Yang Fan grabs the potion, he is shown a message that tells him only God Envoys can use the potion. Being a God Envoy, Yang Fan accepts the opportunity to break through to the 8th rank. As Yang Fan agrees to rank up, energy surrounds him, which he describes as painful, with his blood vessels feeling like they're being pulled out of his body. Yang Fan tells himself to bear the pain as we see him ranking up. The city lord is watching Yang Fan and comments that the rank up to the 8th rank must not be simple compared to the others. That's why only God Envoys can evolve to the 8th rank. Suddenly, Ashwan appears in the room and informs him that both Yang Fan and their subordinates have been healed, and the sage's injuries have also been healed. The city lord tells Ashwan that she has done well. 
Suddenly, she questions if the city lord condescends to be under Yang Fan. Hearing this, the city lord asks what she means, and Ashwan tells the lord that if they don't capture the sage, Master Chu Zongyun will be stuck in a wheelchair forever and unable to use his create food ability. She adds that if, in the future, Yang Fan doesn't fulfill his promise and doesn't challenge the guys who destroyed their world, then what should they do? She questions if they will be Yang Fan's dogs for the rest of their lives. Ashwan takes out a dagger and says that it is not their dream. The city lord orders Ashwan to put away the dagger. Ashwan questions why they should give everything to Yang Fan when it was them who spent countless efforts building everything. She tells the city lord that if he can't do it, she will, and charges toward a defenseless Yang Fan. However, the city lord stops the dagger before it hits Yang Fan. Seeing this, the lord realizes that the person in front of him is not Zen Xian and questions who she really is. The lady reveals her identity as cracks start to appear on her face. She commends the lord for being able to see through her tricks. The lord recognizes her as the white witch, which shocks him. The white witch kicks the lord away, telling him that the dagger he stopped with his hand was coated with poison. As the lord is pushed back and falls to the ground, he sees that his hand has been poisoned. He thinks that it was no wonder the white witch knew so much about them, as she had created a doppelganger to lurk and follow them. The white witch, creating a spear, says that she admires that Yang Fan got the four rings, and she wants them for herself. But before the White Witch could kill Yang Fan, the City Lord tackles him, saying that he can't let him destroy the hope of the world. We see the toxin spreading through the Lord's body as the White Witch tells him that she will kill him first. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.